Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. All right, today I'm gonna do, I guess, kind of a viewer comment kind of thing. Uh, I don't do these very often, but I got a comment the other day that, that really kind of got me to thinking. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that, that, that's a good comment. Anything that gets uh, get you to kind of thinking, reevaluating, uh, that's a good thing. So a user commented on the Roland Rubik's 22 review that I did, uh, where I was messing around with 192 kilohertz sample rates. And so the comment reads, uh, input one high Z is needed for 192K, and there's no high Z for input two. So this attempt, or okay, you know, some snarky BS here. But basically, uh, what, what he's saying through the whole comment is that you can only get 192 kilohertz sample rate uh, if you're using the high Z input, which, uh, you know, I'll be honest, right, right up front, uh, I think that's wrong. I think that's uh, completely wrong. I've been trying to come up with a way, okay, how can I really illustrate that that is incorrect and illustrate that it doesn't matter uh, if you use the high Z or low Z inputs uh, if you're wanting to sample at 192 thousand samples per second. So I think I have a bit of an experiment uh, lined up here. Let's give it a try and let's see if this can prove one way or the other uh, whether we can get 192k out of the low Z inputs. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got a microphone plugged in via XLR, uh, and on the other end of this cable is the Roland Rubik's 22. I've got the XLR plugged into input one, so this is low Z, the uh, XLR input into here. Got my gain adjusted and all that stuff. Uh, I, I've got phantom power engaged. Uh, I got my level set and everything. I've got my headphones plugged into it, and I've got the, uh, the outputs plugged into my recorder so you can hear what I'm doing. Uh, okay, yeah, so the, nothing special about this. This is really similar to how I had everything plugged in my original review. So um, low Z input, not a high Z input. All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so over in Reaper, let's just uh, bring up our uh, audio interface properties here. So let's go to ASIO configuration. Um, so through this, I don't really have any control over the sample rate, which makes me really kind of wonder how Roland expects a person to control the sample rate if they don't give you a way to do it through their ASIO control panel, but that's for another day. Okay, so I've got this on USB streaming mode one, which is basically the smallest ASIO buffer size uh, just to minimize latency. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And so I'm gonna have to control sample rate through Reaper here. So I'll check this box of request sample rate. I'm gonna tell it to request a sample rate of uh, 44.1. 44,100, so let's click OK, and hopefully up here, oh no, we still see the 192. Okay, uh, I was fiddling with this earlier, so let's do this. Project sample rate, 44.1. Okay, there we go. So, okay, we are at 44,100 samples per second, 24-bit, uh, all right, and so we've got an 80 sample buffer as well. All right, well, let's just, uh, let's create a new track. Uh, yes, uh, we are going to uh, use input mono number one. That's where I got my microphone plugged in. Let's go ahead and arm it for recording. And we are at 44.1. So let's just record just kind of like a quick little sample of audio here, all right? Test one, two, test, test one, two. All right, great, that's all we really need. Okay, so what I'm going to do is change my timeline up here to show us uh, minutes and seconds. And what I want to do is just go select one second of audio. Uh, basically, so we can see how many samples are in that one second of audio. That'll show us the sample rate, right? Let's zoom in here a little bit. Uh, let's click on the one second mark, and I'll split it right there. And let's click on the two second mark, and I'll split it right there. Let's delete everything except for that. And let's go ahead and glue this. Okay, great. Uh, let's scoot it to the very first of the project. Okay, let's change the timeline now to show us samples. All right, so let's click on the very end of this uh, media item. And what I, I would expect, since I just recorded that at 44.1, I would expect uh, this one second sample to be exactly 44,100 samples long. So let's, let's see if that's true. All right, let's zoom in, zoom in, zoom way in. Zoom even farther in. 
And okay, so that there's not really a, uh, a big marker up here on the timeline to show us exactly 44,100, but you can see, okay, this line right here is 44,096, so we can count over 97, 98, 99, 100. So there's 44,100 samples in this, uh, in this media item that is exactly one second long. It was recorded at 44,100 samples per second, and so a one second uh, section of audio has, hey, look at that, 44,100 samples in it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, let's just create a new project tab. And for this project, now let's uh, click on this guy again. Let's set it to, uh, I don't know, let's go to 96,000 uh, as our sample rate. Click OK. And up here we see, OK, 96K, uh, 144 sample buffer size. OK, yeah, yeah, all right. And that's just the weird way the rolling drivers works. Uh, you don't really have direct control over your uh, ASIO buffer size. OK, so let's repeat the same experiment here. Let's uh, create a new track. Uh, the input is input number one. That's good. Let's arm it for recording. Let's record real quick. Test, test, one, two, test, test. All right, we'll keep that. Okay, so at, at 96K, all right, let's change our timeline to show, show us just minutes and seconds. And let's, uh, let's just go in and, and find one second of audio. So here's the one second mark, we'll split there. Here's the two second mark, we'll split there. Let's get rid of all the junk. Let's uh, glue this, scoot it over to the very first of the project, click on the very end of it, so in one second, now if we change our timeline to show us samples instead, let's zoom way, way, way in, all the way in, and yeah, you can see it took exactly 96,000 samples. And you know, here at this extreme zoom level, you can see each dot actually represents when a sample was taken. So that's cool. All right, so now I guess for the big test, let's see if that low Z input, recording this microphone, let's see if that will allow us 192,000 samples for one second of audio. All right, so I'm gonna create a new project tab. Uh, let's create a new track, same thing, input number one. Yep, good deal. Let's do here. Okay, so what I wanna do now, instead of 96K, let's set this to 192 thousand. There we go. Okay, yeah, it reflects it in our project setting or our interface settings up here. Good, good. All right, same experiment. Let's record a little snippet of audio. Test, test, one, two, test, test. Okay, fantastic. All right, so let's change our timeline to show us minutes and seconds. Let's isolate one second of audio. Same deal as before. Let's glue that guy. Okay, let's scoot him to the very first. Click on the end of the item. Zoom way, way, way in. Keep zooming. Oh, yeah, I guess first I need to change this to show us samples. Okay, zoom in and okay. That's as far in as we can zoom. We can see that one second of audio actually uh, takes 192,000 samples. Okay, so if we go back and take a look at this item here, uh, so this was the 44.1 uh, project, So, and this item is glued, you can see in the file name up here. So let's just uh, do a little source properties on this and take a look, and we can see that, okay, at the sample rate, it was recorded at 44,100 samples per second. The length is one second, and it took 44,100 samples in total to do one second of audio. Okay, I think that's pretty definitive that we can see that that media item was recorded at 44.1. Okay, let's go and take a look at the next one. So same thing, so you can tell by the name up here, it's glued. So if we go to source properties and take a look at that guy, and so, yeah, so we can see sample rate recorded at 96,000 samples per second. It is one second long and the total samples is 96,000. Okay, I think that's pretty definitive too. That was definitely recorded at 96K. Okay, let's take a look at the third one. Here we go. So, and again, you know, glued. So let's look at the properties. And we can see, okay, the sample rate is 192,000 samples per second. It's one second long and the entire 
uh, clip has 192,000 samples in it. Okay, yeah, I think that is pretty definitive. I don't really think that that leaves much room for argument, right? I mean, that sample was definitely recorded at 192K uh, through a microphone into the low Z input on the Rubik's 22, not a high Z. So wherever this, this idea came from that only the high Z input could re record at 192K uh, sample rate, uh, I, I just think that's blatantly false. All right, I think that's going to do it for me this time. So if you have any experience uh, with, with this unit or with sample rates, uh, if you think that my experiment was flawed in any way, let me know in the comments below. Uh, it, it, if I am wrong, I definitely want to know about that. But I'm pretty sure that it's just patently false that you can only get 192K out of the high Z inputs. All right, hey, well, thank you very much, and I'll see you guys again next time.